Hi, my name is Thomas, and I welcome you to 8-Bit Resurgence. Uh, today we're going to take a look at the Trilogic Phantom. The Trilogic Phantom is a 1541 drive enhancement that consists of a drive board, a kernel ROM upgrade, and a parallel cable that plugs into the user port of the 64. Once it's installed in your 1541 and connected to your 64, uh, you'll see transfer speeds out of your 1541 that you've never seen before. It's tremendously fast. Um, among other things, uh, it enhances uh, the drive command set. Um, it also has a very robust um, disk copier uh, that works with it as well. Um, the product itself was developed in around 1986-1987. Um, and was gone by 1988. Uh, Trilogic was the company that produced it and it's probably best known for the expert cartridge that they produced. That was a cartridge that utilized um, software that was provided on diskette or tape um, and it's a ROM based cartridge that uh, allowed you to freeze um, programs and save them as single files and uh, do all sorts of different uh, things behind the scenes that you normally couldn't do. Um, it's very much a, a powerful utility cartridge, but they're best known for that. Um, by 1988, however, the, uh, the Phantom had disappeared and, and they had cited in terms of reasons why uh, that it was a specialized system and that, that there was a low demand and production of them was very time consuming and it hadn't become uh, profitable for them. It's unfortunate that uh, this hardware didn't reach a wider base um, because it, it really is a tremendous piece of hardware. Um, many reasons why it's extremely rare um, really comes down to the fact that it's a built-in device. Uh, the drive board uh, obviously it goes into the 1541, the kernel replacement goes inside the 64 and uh, the parallel cable hangs out the back. Um, and because it's um, internal, uh, it's easily forgotten. Um, as the years marched on and people stopped using their 64s, you can imagine that uh, these devices would um, simply not be remembered that they were actually in the machine anymore. Uh, they'd go off into a garage or a closet someplace and then eventually being disposed of. Um, as such, uh, there are very few of these remaining in the world. I'm actually only aware of the one um, phantom board um, that exists in the world. I have heard rumors that there are others, but uh, nothing has ever been substantiated. Uh, where I got this from, it's an, a bit of an interesting story and I'll, I'll quickly tell it. Um, a good friend of mine, John Barrell, uh, he was a person who shared my interest in preserving hardware and software. Uh, we were avid, we are, I'm an avid collector and as was he, um, and he lived in the UK so that allowed him to find some unique products that were um, only really available in the UK and hadn't found their way over to North America. Um, he had bought uh, a lot by, as he called it, um, of a system and other software. And when he opened up the 64, he found a kernel board. And then he opened up the drive and he found the Phantom. Um, that was quite a find for him. Unfortunately, there was no documentation that seemed to have been lost. Um, so we had gotten uh, into our discussions as we as we often did, and he he didn't have the skill set to uh, reverse engineer that, and I had already been um, doing that for a while. I had uh, reverse engineered the ice pick cartridge, and uh, and he loved the look of that. Um, I sent him one, um, and he really liked the like what I did. Uh, so he decided that he was going to entrust his Phantom uh, board, kernel board, um, 
to me so that I could reverse engineer it. Um, the ultimate goal was to that I'd be able to provide this to the community and and turn uh, a single rare piece into something that many people uh, could enjoy and, and that was his wish. Um, I, I completed that work earlier this year um, unfortunately John passed away uh, beginning of 2021 and he wasn't able to see this project reach its conclusion. What I'd like to show you now is possibly the only remaining original phantom in existence. There may be others but they're yet to be found. Alright, what we have here is the original phantom board that was provided to me by John. Um, here you can see uh, everything that came with it. There's the kernel board with the switch that switched between uh, the standard uh, kernel and the phantom kernel. This is the uh, sync cable that attached to the a couple of chips on the 1541. There's the parallel cable uh, with connector that went right here. And you see there's a couple of sockets here. Um, you can connect your phantom to either of these. It doesn't matter. They're interconnected within the board. Um, there's no reference anywhere that I can find, not that we have any documentation for it, because unfortunately that seemed to be lost. Um, but through some testing that I've done, I've found that you can actually interconnect two phantoms um, together. So you can have a, a machine that's phantom equipped with a drive 8 and a 9 and it'll load programs just as fast off the 9 as it will with 8 which is kind of a neat thing uh, even though it was never discussed um, I saw that extra um, connection point on there um, and thought I'd give it a try after I followed um, the traces to see where it went. Um, over here there are some pins and on top here are some pins. Uh, again, I've never found any reference as to what they do. Um, they appear to just be test points that perhaps Trilogic used when they designed it. Um, this board came with it and uh, I never saw any purpose for it so on the reproduction I never uh, added that. Here I've put the reproduction board uh, alongside the original. Uh, you'll see uh, it looks virtually the same. Uh, the difference is that the original board um, never had any silk screen on it so uh, it was very important to take note of where everything belonged uh, when I tore it down to um, reverse engineer it so I could reassemble it again and know uh, where to put the parts on the new board. So um, just for ease of, of construction and um, representing where things belong on the board, I added silk screen. Um, otherwise, the board is um, trace for trace, via for via, identical to the original. Uh, everything uh, has found its place to the same location. Um, an agreement with John that I had, he wanted his um, his handle that he used on the boards, which was Draven, on the board. So um, in the final production one, which you see here, uh, right there um, is Draven. And then uh, given that he passed away before we could um, finish, I also um, put this on the back uh, so that everybody can remember. Um, why they have a phantom in their hand, they can thank John for that. So the next part I think we'll do is uh, I'll just demonstrate a few features of the phantom, uh, the fast loading and some of the uh, neat commands that, um, that come with it that are built into it uh, and then that'll pretty much wrap up this video. All right. So now we've moved over to the 64 and um, the Phantom equipped machine. Um, this is what the screen looks like when you power it on. It's a, a 
gray on gray with yellow text and it greets you that it's a Phantom version 1.07 which is the kernel version um, of the Phantom kernel that came with it. Now as mentioned earlier there is no manual for this. Um, that seems to have been lost and it's been elusive so far so uh, you can take this as a as a plea to anybody that happens upon it someday uh, please provide it to the community or send it to me and I'll include it in the github uh, mentioned in the description below uh, for everybody to enjoy um, so what we had to do is we had to figure out what this thing could do for us um, there were some advertisements and some very short articles about this that explained a few or hinted at a few things that it could do um, but the bulk of the commands were unknown uh, so I spent a lot of time working with this phantom system installed on my 64 and uh, I enlisted the help of some some great people over on lemon 64 uh, that's a forum I also put a link down there below it's it's a really great resource um, and we dug dug into this and and looked in wait, there were people that looked at the kernel that looked at the drive ROM and um, I experimented and, and we found a whole bunch of commands um, I, I then wrote a user guide uh, that's up on the github as well for this um, to summarize the what we'd found and uh, to become the new user manual for this. So if I wanted to show a few of the features that uh, can be done with this. Um, first off, uh, an interesting thing is if you press the run stop key and the arrow, the left arrow at the top left of the keyboard, it resets the machine. So that's uh, like a built-in reset. Um, Kind of like typing SYS 64738. Um, it's just uh, run stop and the, the left arrow and the top left of the keyboard. Um, there's two different ways you can load the first program on disk. Um, as anybody that's a Commodore person knows, you can load a program into BASIC with comma 8 or into its originally um, saved machine language lo location by loading a comma 8, comma 1. Um, if you do it uh, comma 8 you press the Commodore run stop and and that'll load the first program on disk with a com comma 8 and if you do shift run stop that does it comma 8 comma 1 <coughs> there are um, other commands that um, are assigned to the function keys uh, for example F1 will load the directory um, on drive 8 uh, F2 I don't have a drive 9 connected at the moment but that'll do a drive 9 um, F3 does load F4 is save, F5 is run there's um, a whole list of different uh, commands assigned to the function keys again um, don't no need to jot any of this down if you're trying to keep up and, and learn some of these commands that's all in the user guide uh, that's been created. Uh, another interesting function of this is if you type in at EA <coughs> sorry I'm gonna switch back to drive 8 and I'll do an at EA this gives you a summary of all of the different features whether they're enabled or disabled um, on your Phantom. Uh, by default there are, everything is enabled, there are features to turn them off. <clears throat> some of them I haven't found yet um, so there's still uh, some work to be done. Um, there's a there's a function at fl will lock a file and at fu will unlock a file. <coughs> Now, for example, if you wanted to load a protected program uh, on this, but the protection scheme doesn't like the Phantom, you can simply type go 1541, and that'll take you 
back to the original um, drive ROM of the 64 uh, making your system compatible with protected software. I have tried all sorts of different protected software and it all works in that configuration. Alright, another interesting feature of this Phantom is that you can actually write on diskettes that are not notched uh, by issuing the appropriate command. You see this Dyson has a notch on the on the one side which is normal but the nobody's notched the other side uh, which makes it uh, not writable unless the um, the write protect sensor is bypassed. You can do that um, with software. So one of the commands on here is at WC and what that does is that tells the drive to ignore the write protect um, sensor until you change the disk and then after that it, it goes back to normal. So now that I've issued this command I can actually format this disk and that is writing on the back side. You can't really see because you're looking at the screen but you'll have to take my word for it. Um, obviously the command there, uh, the the response does tell you no write protect until this change. Um, there's also another command that you can do um, which is a at WI and that will turn write protect um, the write protect sensor off for the duration of your time using your 64 and drive um, until you turn it off. Once you turn the machine off and turn it back on of course then it goes back to normal. Um, you can also issue the the command to format it to the higher capacity as well by using the plus sign and you can hear it's formatting away and um, that'll give you the 749 blocks free and then if you want to return um, the drive back uh, to normal it's the at WN command and I'll issue that as soon as it finishes formatting the disk so at WN and now write protect is set at normal so loading um, programs is very fast with this with the system. I'll load uh, a program so you can see how quick it is. Um, I just pop the new disk in here and we'll do a directory. You can see how fast the directory comes up. Uh, when you see that you know that it's um, connected uh, properly with the parallel cable. So I'm going to do this one. As you can see it's a fairly large program. Uh, you know, Over 200 blocks it's going to load and I'll just tell it to load it and if you if you watch the um, installation video you saw me loading as well um, but that's it that's how long it takes to load so that pretty much wraps up the phantom uh, video that I wanted to produce uh, got a chance to show you the original the reproduction and some of the things uh, that I can do along with a bit of the history as to how I got it and where it came from. So thanks for watching and I'll try to come up with something interesting next time for you to watch. Bye.